So, in the last lecture, we looked at one approach to solving an MDP. So, what do you mean by solving an MDP? So, given an MDP, right, so we have to find an optimal policy or an optimal value function in for that MDP, right. So, given the state's action, the transition probabilities, rewards, gamma, everything is specified. Still, finding an optimal policy is a hard problem. So, we started off with looking at how given a policy pi, you will find the value function for that policy pi. And once you are able to find the value function for a policy pi, how you can use that to define a better policy, right? And keep going until you come to a optimal policy and the corresponding optimal value function, right? So this approach is called policy iteration. So we'll come back to policy iteration in a bit. So we looked at a couple of different uh, ways on which you can do those iterative uh, evaluation and all that. We'll come back to that in a bit, <coughs> right? So in this lecture, we are going to look at another approach to solving the MDP. Right. Again, you are given the full MDP, right. You are not, uh, you know, uh, working with uh, some kind of lack of knowledge, right. So, which is what reinforcement learning is all about, right. So, when we come back, we start looking at proper reinforcement learning algorithms, uh, we will be looking at, uh, um, you know, uh, algorithms that do not make assumptions about the knowledge of P and R, right. So, it just assumes that you know only the states and the actions, and then you can draw samples and so on. So, forth. but uh, for the time being, we are looking at the uh, you know the stochastic dynamic programming variations and uh, this algorithm we are going to look at is called value iteration. So, when we looked at iterative policy evaluation, so what did we do? We took the Bellman equation for a policy pi, right? We took the Bellman equation for a policy pi and converted that into an update rule. So, how did we do that? We took v k on the right hand side, plugged that in and computed v k plus 1. So, we saw how we did that for the iterative policy evaluation. At that point, I had told you that while this might seem like an inefficient way of solving a system of linear equations, we will use the same idea when we come to solving the Bellman optimality equation. So, the problem with solving the Bellman optimality equation as a system of equations is because it is nonlinear. <coughs> so, why is it nonlinear? Because we have this max here, right. So, the max term makes this equation a nonlinear equation, even though it is a system of nonlinear equations, even though you still have the same thing. So, you have n variables and n equations and all that because of the nonlinearity, you will have to look at different ways of solving it. And one way of doing that is to actually take the Bellman equation, so which has v star on the left hand side, right, which has v star on the left hand side and v star on the right hand side, right. So, we have v star on the left and v star on the right and convert that into a backup equation or an update rule or an iteration. So, how do we do that? So, we basically put in v k right of s prime on the right hand side right and then compute v k plus 1 of s okay. and we keep iterating this until the difference between v k and v k plus 1 is very small as we know already right. So, the difference between v k and v k plus 1 is very small and the theory tells us that this also will converge, right? Just like the uh, 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 iterative policy evaluation algorithm converges, so the value iteration algorithm will also converge to the optimal value function, right? If you keep running till infinity, right? It will converge to the optimal value function. Okay. So how will we do this? We'll start off with, you know, v zero of s equal to zero for all s, I mean, you can start it off with any arbitrary value, it will converge, but setting it to 0 is actually helpful for us, uh, 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 because it allows us to again see the uh, uh, the dynamic programming structure here, right. So, when I set it to 0, so what will happen when I uh, try this, this is this term will go to 0, right, I will basically have r plus, right, r into this, this expression. So, what is this expression? It is basically the expected reward I am going to get for taking action. A, right. So, this expression that you see here is the reward I am going to get for taking action A, right. And because I put the max here, it is the maximum expected reward, right. So, it is basically the reward corresponding to the best action that I can take from state S, just this one action that I can take from state S. So, it is like solving the one step dynamic program, one step MDP problem, right. So, here is an MDP. All you have to do in this MDP is behave optimally for one step and then you stop, right? Nothing more after that. So, that is why uh, uh, we start with this and then that gives you this. So, V1 of S is essentially the 
optimal one step reward right uh, basically it will suggest the expected reward for the best action you could take from state s now you come back with v1 of s and plug that in right so this is no longer true so you'll have v1 of s here and that will give you some value that is the best possible reward you can get if i take one step from s prime and stop right that's the best possible reward i can get if i take one step from s prime and stop and now i add r here which is the reward i'll get for taking the current action a under consideration right and then i'll uh, look at the expectation of that right suppose i take action a what is the reward i'm going to get and what is the next state I am going to land in and the reward, the best reward I am going to get from the next state, not just any reward, right? the best reward I am going to get from the next state. I will take the expectation of this. Again, just like we had in the policy evaluation step. So, this is equivalent to solving the MDP, assuming that the policy is no longer than two steps. Right? You just take two steps, you take exactly two steps and you stop. What is the best possible value that you can get? So, likewise, V3 of S will be the value function, optimal value function corresponding to the policy for three steps, right? What is the optimal policy for three steps, right? So, like that. So, it just keeps going. That is the idea behind value iteration, right? So, I am not going to belabor this because we already seen this in the uh, 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 policy valuation step, right? The only difference here is the max, okay? There we were actually looking at the given policy pi and where is a deterministic policy, we just had a pi a, right? So, instead of uh, pi, sorry, pi of s instead of thinking about some arbitrary a, here we are actually looking at max over a, so the best possible a, that is what we okay. And putting things together, we have this value iteration algorithm, right. You start off by, uh, you know, specifying a small threshold theta, right, uh, that tells you how accurate you want to be, right. And then uh, uh, you set uh, everything to be 0, like uh, uh, we said, or you can set anything to be arbitrary, except what is the thing that you have to be careful about? Yes, the terminal state should have a zero reward, right? This is something I explained in the last uh, uh, video also. The terminal state should have a zero reward. So you start off with this, and then you have your uh, uh, max that you max difference that you record, and then you have your uh, uh, you store your world value function, right? You store the world value function here, and then uh, you do one step of iteration. So you use the uh, world value function on the right hand side, compute the new value function on the left hand side, and then you update your max. Max, max deviation and as long as this is greater than theta, you just keep going around, right. If it is greater than theta, that means you have not reached the uh, desired accuracy. And once you reach that, you stop, okay. So, with uh, with policy iteration, what was happening was when, when, when you actually came to a point where you could stop, you had the optimal value, op optimal uh, uh, policy, right. And then you could just evaluate that optimal policy and get your optimal value function. But here, when you stop, so, what is it happening, right? You have stopped because you are, you are not making any steps larger than theta, right? From one iteration to the next, you just made a step that is lesser than theta, right? So, at that point, you stop. That does not mean you have reached the optimal value function, right? Does not mean you have reached the optimal value function. All you have come to is a point where you are kind of diminishing returns, right? If you keep doing these updates further, you are not going to get any better. So, you, you reach a point of diminishing returns and then you stop, okay. So, we have to be a little bit more careful here. So, you have to do a little bit of work to show that if you stop here, right. So, this v pi that you get here, right, and the true v star, right, the v pi and the v star, the true v star and the v pi corresponding to the pi that you get here, right you have to show that they are that is lesser than some limit, right. And it is not not trivial to show and we can show, right. It is less, lesser than some limit, uh, which is a function of uh, both the, uh, the theta at which you stop and also gamma, the discount factor that you have in your, uh, right. So, we can show that this v pi minus v star is, is within a very small bound of uh, uh, so, uh, uh, a, a constant factor, right? That depends on gamma and uh, some of the other uh, factors in the uh, algorithm, right? Again, I am not going to get into the details of that. You can look it up later, but this is something to keep in mind, right? So, you do not get pi star, right? What you get is something that is very close to pi star, okay? So, that is basically what uh, what the uh, stopping criterion is, right? 
So at the end of the day, so once you have your final V, right? So you stop here, right? You stop when delta is less than theta. So that means the difference is no longer no larger than theta. At that point, you have to do your arg max A once more, right? This is basically the uh, 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 you know greedy step, right? Greedification step that you would have done in the policy iteration algorithm. You don't do a greedification step repeatedly here in the value iteration. After the entire thing is stopped, right? You do once you do the greedification step. Right, and that gives you the new policy pi of s, and that you can take as being very close to the optimal policy. Right, so and people have come up with various ways in which you can do the value iteration uh, approach itself, right, very very efficiently. And uh, like I said, uh, quite often this is more of a, a, a method of choice uh, for classical uh, problem settings than uh, uh, policy iteration is. So uh, let's look at the. Um, the computer manufacturer problem, right? So you can advertise or not advertise. You remember this problem that we looked at earlier, right? So we started off with the word problem, and then we formulated that as an MDP, right? Now let us look at how you will apply value iteration uh, to find the optimal policy uh, the manufacturer should follow, right? So remember the problem. So this is what it was, right? So you have uh, two states, hot and cold. When you are in state hot, you have two actions. You can either advertise or you can not advertise. And when you are in state cold, again you have two actions, you can do research or not do research and then you have all the uh, parameters that are associated with, uh, with that. Huh? So, let us look at it this way. Right? So, then we actually talked about this and uh, so this is essentially the value iteration setup. Right? So, I will start off with both the values to be initialized to 0. So, V hot and V cold both are initialized to 0. Right? Notice one thing here, is that a terminal state? No, there is no terminal state. Right? You can keep going back and forth between hot and cold, hot and cold, and your idea is to come up with a policy that will, you know, get the maximum return in the long run, right? There is really no terminal state. This is one of those cases where your episodes won't terminate, right? So you don't have to necessarily initiate any of the v's as zero, particularly, but since we are anyway initializing all v's as zero, so it's all fine, right? Then we have our uh, uh, um, value iteration set. Uh, step right. So, you have your uh, uh, Vs prime here and then you have Rss and Pss prime. So, all of these are anyway uh, given to you right. So, you have to select some value of gamma. Uh, so, I will just select gamma equal to 0 0.9 right just to make uh, make make a, make a choice here right. And uh, so, if you look at the state hot right. So, what are the, uh, uh, the parameters that you have? So, advertise hot what is the probability you will go to hot is 0 0.8 right. Advertise hot, probability will go to cold is 0 0.2. Okay. Advertise hot, probability will go to hot is the reward for getting this, right? So that's basically we 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 had assumed it was 0 0.4 earlier, right? And likewise, the probability of not advertise hot hot is 0 0.5. And if you don't advertise from hot, you'll go to cold. It's on the probability 0 0.5, right? And likewise, the reward uh, 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 for not advertising is always plus six, right? like reward for advertising is plus 4 regardless of what the state transition is right and likewise you can write for uh, state cold also right so so let's look at this so how will this work look like so i start off with uh, 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 i'll just do the update for v hot right and then later we'll we'll just do the thing for the entire setup and then we'll look at the uh, final uh, outcome right so the so i'm going to just look at this for v hot so v of uh, hot Right, I'll do v1 of hot. Right, we started off with v hot of zero. Uh, uh, remember, v it's not quite v. Right, the algorithm doesn't say v1, so we'll have v hot. Right, so we'll set uh, some small uh, small v is equal to v hot is equal to zero. Right, now v hot is equal to max over a. That means I have to compute this for every a. Right, so I'll do this max. The first line is for advertise right so max uh, uh, so advertise so that is probability of advertise hot hot uh, so that is 0.8 that is the first outcome i'm going to take so that is 0.8 times so this is the outcome so the reward that's going to be plus 4 plus gamma times uh, vs prime so we are looking at hot hot here right so hot hot is the transition. So, in this particular case, yes is already hot, right and yes prime I am going to take as hot for this 
right and the action here is advertise and the action here is not advertise. So, that is how we are going to write out this thing, right. The S is hot is common and here I am going to take S, S prime equal to 4. Right? So, and so this I will use V of hot because that is what I have, right. That is the outcome for advertise hot hot. Then I have to look at uh, this is the point 8 of going to hot, right. So, then I will have to look at plus 0.2 of uh, I still advertise right. So, advertise so the reward is plus 4 and um, and I am going to hold. And likewise not advertise what I will do I will have a 0 0.5 here and uh, not advertise will give me a reward of plus 6 gamma times V of hot because we are looking at the next state is hot here and then 0.5 plus 6 plus gamma times V of cold. Right. So, I will compute the first row, I will compute the second row. So, which do you think is higher? The second row gives me okay. So, let us look at, uh, uh, so I am going to compute both of these rows, right. Then I am going to look at what uh, uh, what comes out. So, in this case I am going to get point uh, the 3 plus 3, this is 6 and this reward is going to be 4 and therefore, uh, the max would be, so V hot would be 6, right. But remember, but this is just for the best possible one step action I can take and I am not worrying about what happens in the future, right. That is what the first iteration gives me, right. So, if I am in state hot, the best one action to take is obviously not advertise because I get a higher reward for not advertising. I will get a reward of 6 for not advertising. If I advertise, I get a reward of 4 plus something in the future, but right now we are not looking at what comes in the future. So, right now we are looking at V hot is going to be 6, right. Likewise, I can do the same computation and I will get V cold is equal to, right? so what will I get V cold to be equal to? Uh, v cold will be equal to minus 3, right. That is the best possible action I can do in cold, right. So, I can do no research. So, I will get a reward of minus 3. I am not worried about the future, right. If I do research, I get a reward of minus 5, right. So, that is worse than minus 3. So, if I take the max, I will get V cold is minus 3, right. Now, I can go back and start doing the second iteration of this. So, where V hot will be 0 0.8 times 4 plus gamma times 6 and while here it will be gamma times minus 3. So, you can already see that even the one step uh, impact is going to start taking hold and like that we keep iterating. So, for the second step what will happen? This is basically what happens in the first step, right. So, the second step, so V hot, same uh, same kind of uh, thing, right. So, I have to do this max over, so I have 0.8 times 4 plus gamma V hot which is 6 plus 0.2 times uh, plus, oops, sorry, plus 4 plus gamma V cold which is minus 3. Likewise here you will have 0.5 times, uh, sorry, 6 plus gamma times 6 plus 0.5 times 6 plus gamma times V cold which is minus 3. Right, and now I will do the max of these and you can compute what this is going to be. Right, remember gamma is 0 0.9 and you can do this and then you can keep going, right. So, so this is how you apply value iteration uh, to a, a, a specific uh, numeric setting and we will see a more uh, expanded example of this in uh, one of the next lectures, right.